Hi guys and welcome to another Train at Sim 2022 video. Today I'm doing something I usually wouldn't do as a video. This is a rail tour. And there is a reason for that because the sort of theme for this video and the conversation I want to have with you is about rail tours. This is the Welsh Marches Rail Tour which ran uh, beginning at end of last month uh, from Stevenage up to Hereford is what I want to say. It was Hereford. I should know, I was on it. This was the Welsh Marches. Uh, so the scenario is, hello Trove, you've taken control of the tour at Bristol Parkway and are heading and, and, and are taking it for the rest of the journey up to Hereford. You'll be following one whiskey five five up the marches, which is formed of two one five threes, which make things difficult as it's limited to seventy five mile an hour. So watch out your adverse signals up to Hereford. Set your cab to park immediately. We've already departed. We're halfway through because so I'm not going to spoil the whole scenario for you. Uh, the scenario itself is available over at alanthompsonsim.com. Head on over there and grab this if you want. The scenario is called One Zulu Five Zero, the 0657 at Stevenage, Hereford, the Welsh Marches. Right, blow about the way. I want to know, and if you guys can put this in the comments for me, that'd be great. Have you done a rail tour before? And what class did you travel in? Did you travel in just standard? Did you do uh, first class? Did you do first class dining? And if you did, if you could put in the comments what class you were in and how you sort of did your food and drink, I would love to know that. Um, more of a market research thing than anything else, but if you could stick that in the comments for me, I'd love to know what it was. Or if you do these regularly, let me know what it is you look for in a rail tour. So, honestly, it was my first one. It was my first proper rail tour, and uh, I was very kindly invited on it by uh, Twisted Red Black from the, the Twitch streams. Uh, Matt, who's a good friend of mine as well. Um, and we were in first dining. We were actually about here. I think we were here. My, I, was, I was in the window seat for this section and then we swapped around for the next leg. The rake itself was the Riviera Trains rake. I think it was meant to be Mark II's and then it got swapped out sort of last minute. Not 100% sure. Uh, but this coach up at the end here, this guards van, was actually one of the uh, generator ones. It's the only thing that's different in the rake, but it's the same loco and everything. So I was quite excited when I sort of thought about doing when Matt invited me to do this, because I'd never done one, and I thought, well, what's it going to be like? Is it going to be like a veg? I'm going to say the word veg here, and people are going to go, oh, don't call people vegetables. Um, I'm not calling people vegetables. It's platform veg. Um, it's a train spotter term. A slightly derogatory one, but one that's used within the uh, the community quite regularly. And I don't mind using it because I'm not calling anybody else it, apart from normal able-bodied people that just like to vegetate at the edge of platforms and, and look at trains. Um, foamers, buffer sniffers, train spotters, you name it, there's names for them all. It's our own little in thing in it, I suppose. I thought it was going to be full of sort of train spotters, and I'm sure there are tours that are more set up towards the sort of enthusiast market, train enthusiast, rail fan for the nicer terms, um, which I class myself in this category, so don't worry. Um, I thought it was going to be full of sort of uh, train enthusiast, things like that. And whilst there was a good few on this service, um, this tour, they were probably the minority. This was, I think, more of a dining sort of uh, great way to see the country. middle-aged to slightly older way to get around the country uh, we're gonna now get hit by loads of reds which is great just as I've started the video I thought I'd skip this but um, so I was sort of apprehensive about what I was gonna see and what it was gonna be like was the food gonna be good um, was the service gonna be nice was the stock gonna be clean I had loads of questions this this tour itself was operated by UK rail tours and I'll tell you now, I couldn't fault them. Uh, they were fantastic. Apart from a grumpy guard when we got on, but he, he quickly sorted himself out. <laughs> it was more endearing than, than irritating. Uh, but it was it was a really, 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 really nice day out. And I'm so glad somebody's made a version of it in Train Simulator, to be honest with you, so it's nice to be able to drive it. I'm going to pick a few highlights from my sort of time on it that I saw my experience of it give you just a quick summary of it I'm not going to do the whole scenario um, and I'm not going to keep going on and on and on this is more about finding out from you guys what you guys think of rail tours one of the big things that I like I said I was nervous about was the people we were going to end up on the train with 
And when we first sat down, we didn't quite understand the seating arrangement because it's it's F and B, I think it is. It's like it's like nine F and and B, and I'm like, that's not a real seat number. What's this? But it means forward or backwards. Um, and we'd got our seats completely wrong, and there was a a retired couple uh, that sat in front of us, and actually we were in their seats, but they were really accommodating. And we sat down, and then we had another couple to our left. One was a retired train driver and the, the other lady, his, his partner, I assume, still worked on the railways uh, at a station on the East Coast Main Line. And we probably couldn't have been sat with a nicer bunch of people. We were quite different in terms of where sort of backgrounds and things like that. But as the journey went on, we just ended up chatting. It was like, you only go on holiday and you get holiday friends. Or like when you go on holiday as kids and your parents got holiday friends. It was like that. You're all sort of stuck together for this eight hours. And even though we came from completely different walks of life, it was brilliant. I had a really nice time with them. Cracking sort of bit of banter between us, basically because the, the lady sitting in front of us could not fathom in her head that that we sort of were there for the, for the trains and the... the the scenery. So while they're all going, oh, there's lovely hills. There's me and Matt going, oh, look at that point rodding. Oh, look at the look at the signal wire. Look at the cabling. Look at all that. Oh, did you see that bridge when we come off there? We need to make sure we get that in. And they found this hilarious the whole way through. But of course, it led into a bit more than that because we kind of roughly knew where we were. They'd be like, oh, where are we now? Or what's that? And once the sniggering and everything had stopped, we were the ve- we were the veg on the train. Do you know what I mean? But once the sniggering had sort of stopped and everything like that. It became, I think they became interested in what we were talking about. And then, of course, because the guy opposite us, like beside us, was also a retired train driver, was a retired Great Northern driver, he was able to chime in with bits and pieces as well. And he had a, a route atlas for the, the, well, the track diagrams for the section we were actually on. So we were referring to that and everything, that, passing that backwards and forwards between us. And it was really, really good. But I think what I sort of saw rub off was sort of our enthusiasm for not just the destination or not just the journey or not just sitting down and being treated nicely was actually the the joy of the railways themselves um and i think to see these other guys sort of this 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 couple in front of us take some of that on board and sort of start getting interested in why we found these things interesting and then we when we explained it towards the end of the trip this couple were pointing things out to me and matt and I, I just thought it was fantastic. It was a really nice way to share a hobby that you wouldn't usually do. And it, it was it was really, really exciting, really, really good. But getting back to the actual service and stuff you get on board, you, you're treated like a king um, in First Island. It was fantastic. A really, really nice treat day out. It is not something everybody can afford. Let me stress that very, very clearly. It is not something that anybody would just be able to afford. A first class dining option for this service was £239. Um, it's a sort of... I wouldn't say it was a once in a lifetime thing. Um, I know it might be for some, but it would probably be... I mean, I've got kids, I've got holiday. I could, I could get... Do you know what I mean? I could get a weekend away with the kids for that. So it's uh, definitely a once in a blue moon thing. But it was Matt's birthday and it was a bit of a treat, so it was uh, worthwhile. I, I sort of I sort of ended up calling it on stream a couple of days ago. It was like a male spa day. And females could enjoy it as well, don't worry. I'm not, not spe- specifying genders that enjoy a rail tour. Um, but for me, it felt like a real nice break. And I enjoy a spa day too, don't get me wrong. But um, I probably enjoy it more than my missus does, to be honest. <laughs> but, but it was... Uh, yeah, like a real nice break and a getaway. So the service on the way out there, you got your full English breakfast, um, spectacular food, spectacular service. Before you got off the train at Hereford, they took your drinks order for when you arrived back on the train, everything like that. Well, I only had, I had one beer, probably about now-ish, where we are now. Um, probably only sort of 20, 30 miles outside of Hereford. I had my first beer and then I had a couple of pints when we were in Hereford. And then I had a few on the way back. But it wasn't like a big drinking day or anything like that. Nobody was drunk. It wasn't like an over-the-top one. I'm sure there are tours where it's definitely the opposite to that. But um, for me, it was very chilled, very relaxed. As much tea and coffee. I mean, I, I, I think Matt had had six coffees by the time we got on the North London lines. It was ridiculous. But 
you're well looked after. Put it that way, very, very well looked after. Like you'd want to be for the price. Um, Hereford itself, it was, parts of it were pretty, parts of it were pretty, but it's not somewhere I'd be jumping to go back to. Um, I'll be completely honest. A couple of nice pubs, a couple of nice pubs, and walked through a really odd graveyard that was quite cool. Went for a little adventure down some side streets afterwards. <coughs> but I think the highlight for my for me at Hereford was the Hereford uh, Model Centre. If you want a good old school toy shop slash model shop, and I'm sure quite a lot of you get excited for that sort of thing like I do, oh, it's amazing. It's all higgledy-piggledy, but everything's on show from the O-gauge stuff down to the N-gauge stuff. There are things you can pick up and touch. They've got every Lego set you can imagine, like a proper, proper like kids' Christmas Lego selection masses of it playmobil and then all the model railway stuff skeletrics uh plastic kits you name it they had it is this red it is so you really really could spend i reckon the three hours we had in hereford i could have probably easily spent just there alone um <laughs> so moving on from that we got back on the train and i had what did i have I had a pint of Stella, and that was, I think, £3.50. Which is a ridiculously cheap price. And yes, it was in a can, don't get me wrong, but because they, they, they were struggling with ice vessels, it came in a, a champagne cooler, like a wine cooler, with ice, which I just loved the little touch for that, it was brilliant. Um, and then we had... Then they started off with bread and things. Like, you don't just get, like, your, your course of dinner. It is, like, full silver service, but you get, like, a bread course. And, like, breakfast was, like, two rounds of croissants and toasts and brioches and all sorts, you can imagine. And then your full English. And then another round of toast and brioches and danishes. You don't go hungry. You don't go hungry. Put it that way. They were very accommodating. Um, there was people with special dietary requirements around us that were catered for brilliantly. I didn't like either of the starters that were on offer. And luckily enough, there was a coconut and something soup. A coconut and sweet potato, I think it was. Or spotnut squash. Very, very nice. Quite Thai-flavoured. Beautiful. But I managed to get that as well, even though I hadn't specified it. Because uh, we didn't actually know what the menu was before the day. And that is probably my only, the only gripe of the day was that our tables, where we were, our little sort of compartment table thing. So it's a four, four plus two. Um, and our sort of air, our little compartment area didn't end up with menus on the table. That was probably the only gripe. Um, so we didn't know what we were getting until it was like in front of us, basically. Or well, they, until they came around and asked you what you were having. But that was it, the only gripe. But yeah, and then full roast dinner with every little add-on you wanted if you wanted extra potatoes if you wanted an extra bit of meat if you wanted an extra roast dinner it was literally you could just stop the person going past and they'd pile it on your plate they were not stingy in any way shape or form you were on lines that i wouldn't usually have passed in this way it was my first time up the welsh marches um that's the tree surgeons out the front just started up chainsaws, which means the chip is going to be on soon, so I better hurry up with this video. Um, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. I, I'd never been up the Welsh marches before, and it was really interesting to do it com and compare it to... I know it's real bad to do this sometimes, but compare it to the train sim route. And while some bits of this route, I could tell you exactly where I was. They were few and far between, I won't lie, but it was really good to see. This route is set pre quite a long time ago as well. Um... But it was good to have something that I'd done in train sim and not done in real life and then go and do it in real life. And coming up to sort of Shrewsbury and doing the curve round and then back into Birmingham, North uh, Wolverhampton and that way was really cool as well. I'd never sort of done that sort of route and, and thoroughly enjoyed it. If you like a bit of industrial neglect, which I do, the bits around Birmingham, Wolverhampton, I don't think you can beat. But also a bit of what I call garden perving as well. If you, if you do a bit of that when you're on the railways, looking in people's back gardens, seeing who's got a clean back garden, who's got a messy back garden... And seeing how many people chuck a load of crap just onto the over the over the fence is unreal. Like you go past certain houses and they'd have like pyramids of just tut, just rubbish, old slides and swings and bin bags, just completely piled up to as high as their uh, high as their gate goes. It was hilarious. But the whole sort of day was 
just really relaxing, really, really chilled. I'm trying to sort of think of a better way to describe it because I just keep wanting to say those same words over and over again, and that's a bit boring. Interesting, really interesting. From a people perspective as well, listening to people's different reasons for being on it, uh, the couple that were sitting opposite us, they'd been, because of lockdown and everything, they'd usually be going on foreign holidays. But whilst it's been locked down and they still didn't quite want to travel yet, what they were doing was using these rail tours to go and explore these other little places in the country. And then they would then go back and like uh, look at booking a cottage if they liked where they were. So they went up to Hereford. Would have they booked a cottage in Hereford? I think they said they probably wouldn't. Um, but some of the other journeys they've done, they have then gone home and booked a week up there or whatever. So I thought that was a really good use of a really nice day out. It was like, so it gave it more of a purpose than just a trip out. And it made it more of a ceremony having the dinner and the nice lunch and the treated like royalty for a little bit. It was a really clever way to do things in my eyes. Do you know what I mean? They were retired, they had the money, no skin off my nose, they were enjoying what they wanted to do and what they were doing and how they were doing it. And I think people could have done that from first standard class as well, they could have quite happily done that. But it was just, the whole experience is cool. The other experience that I had was Mark 1s on the main line. I, I very, 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 very have a vague memory of Mark 1s in the very early 90s when I was maybe 6 or 7 um, I think there was a, a one time we had to change trains at March I think and I ended up on a Mark 1 to Peterborough it was in the back of my head um, and I think between Glasgow and Dumfries at some point as well um, or, the, or vice versa I mean Carlisle Dumfries I'm not sure but we were 95 mile an hour timed, and it was an experience, travelling at 95 miles an hour on a Mark 1. To say that they were smooth, I, I could happily say they were actually very smooth. The ride couldn't really fault. Couldn't really fault them. I can't get over the niggling worry in the back of my head, and actually the driver that was sitting beside us had the same... We did end up in this conversation quite morbidly um, about the structural integrity of Mark 1 rolling stock. Um... And the safety aspect come up. I'm not saying that they're unsafe, right? Before anybody says, oh, don't mark one, say the best we have ever built. No, what I'm saying is that there were definitely things that are different to today's standards. So the fact that there was no CDLs, there's no central door locking. The doors are actually locked just with like a, what I'd call it, like a pub toilet lock. <laughs> That's very trusted. No bars on the windows on this set either. Um... And it was just very different. And I know people are going, yeah, because there isn't idiots leaning out of windows and, and undoing door handles when the train's moving. I completely get all that. So you don't need to say that sort of thing in the comments. I understand that. But it was just very different from someone who's been brought up in a more health and safety conscious era uh, to be traveling on something in 2022, which has the safety features from 1952, is uh, an exciting thing. It's a different thing. It is it's quite different. And even sitting down on a proper toilet it's just different the, the, the toilet space is huge it was it, it was great and at the speed it was fantastic and being able to open the windows and every time everybody will have seen this on Mark 1's on rail tours and it was something I was quite worried about as well was the condensation a winter rail tour to me my images of even like in the like early at the 80s 70s and 80s you see those sort of very atmospheric pictures of Mark 1's, the sort of sodium bulbs or the tungsten bulbs, condensation all the way through the window, and it freezing cold outside. That is literally what this service turned up to us like. You couldn't see in the train. There was condensation so thick on the inside of the train that you couldn't see. Got into a really warm and toasty coach after standing on Steenage platform at sort of six in the morning, freezing cold, it's about minus two. Get into this really nice warm train, but of course the condensation was ridiculous. So I did spend a lot of time wiping it down and everything. But the condensation did go. But it was just another one of the little features of the, the Mark 1s. And of course, when we got on, nobody wanted the windows open, even the tiny little bit to ventilate them. But after we were on it for sort of half an hour and people had had a cup of coffee and that, we were allowed to open the windows a little bit. 
That's the chipper on now, so I'm not actually going to be able to go that much longer, but I'm going to try and carry on and hope you can't hear that too much. The other real exciting bit about being on a Mark 1 was the fact that the vestibules, it's like standing outside. When you walk through the vestibule of Mark 1, it is literally like you're outside of them. The sounds, everything you could hear, and because we were so close to the 67, it was a great place to sit and listen to the locomotive and all the noises it made. And it was just one of those experiences I don't think I'll forget in a hurry. I don't massively find 67s that exciting, but I really enjoyed the haulage of one that uh, on, on the day and seeing it up close and listening to the noises, the sparks valve ticking and all of that jazz just, just gave me a little bit more affection for a 67 than I would have done normally. And I think that's the other thing that happens with rail tours and or sessions that you do with trains or sometimes you spend a lot of time with a certain locomotive is even if they're not the sort of thing that you're really into, they can sort of rub off on you a little bit. I find it when I go and do like recording sessions or things like that, it might not be stock that I'm massively into, but when I do go and do it, it's it does bring a sort of new sense of appreciation for that bit of rolling stock or, or whatever and it's the same with the mark ones i was never a massive mark one fan never would have really in fact i would have said i'd be i was in my head i was going to be slightly disappointed if it was mark ones and actually i'm glad it was mark ones so i was real glad that i got that sort of experience to do that because it's not going to be around forever no control emission toilets none of that jazz it sounded better than that as well There's some lovely people on the train as well, apart from the guys we met around. I met a guy that watches the stream, met another couple of guys who watch the YouTube videos. That was really nice to see and sort of talk to them. Now, the, the other really interesting bit that I wanted to talk about was towards the end. And that was the bar bill at the end. I think it was 15 quid. Matt, wasn't, Matt had one, one drink or whatever. Um, he had a, a pint of Magnus. And the rest was me with, with, with Stella. 15 quid. And probably could put another 15 quid for beers when we were in Hereford. So 30 quid on top of the price you'd already paid for your beer. Don't see that as a bad one, to be honest with you at all. So all in all, it was a really good day out. And what I'd like to hear from you guys, like I said at, at the start of the video, was what do you look for in a rail tour? What do you usually book on a rail tour? What's been your best rail tour? Just that sort of thing. I'd like to get a feeling of, of who does what, why, where and when. And, and what you like about them. Because it's something I'd love to be able to put on myself. Something I'd love to be able to get into doing is, is maybe buying up so many seats in a, in, a, in, a, in a rail tour. Or a charter in something at some point. And I'd love to see the viability of it. So I'd really like to know from you guys what you think of that. And how you would like to see it. And we've now got some really cool operators, like the Inner City Rail Tour guys that have got the 87s, with the, the Mark 3s, or the 90s, and the DVT. Um, there's the Blue Pullman with the, the 43s, the HST rakes. There's so many new stuff coming out at the moment for Rail Tour stuff that I'm... It could become another big part of my hobby, to be completely honest. So... What have you done? How did you like it? What were the best bits? What were the worst bits? What was the cost? What did you look for in a rail tour? Do you look at cost versus mileage? That sort of thing. Because, I mean, this tour, I think, was... It was about... It wasn't even that high mileage. I can't remember the top of my head. I want to say it was about 400 miles, but I don't even think it was that. Um, I think it was actually a lot less than that. But in my head, I had it. It was going to be around that. And it did, like, a speech bubble from Stevenage. It was quite cool, the route. Um, Routing-wise, we went... Stevenage, uh, North London Lines, Great Western Main Line, Seven Tunnel, um, Welsh Marches, Wolverhampton, Shrewsbury, Wolverhampton, avoided New Street, uh, came back in at, was it Coventry? I think it was Coventry came back in at, or International. I think it was International we came back in at, and then down the West Coast Main Line. Um, And then back, North London lines, up the East Coast Main Line to Stevenage. So it was quite a cool little, quite a cool little route, really. Like, 
and comparing some of those routes to train sim was hilarious north london lines as much as it's got some really good bits it is really really different and there's so much that's been missed out on north london lines but again it's an older route so there's stuff that i think could be updated here and there so yeah for a lad's day out or a couple of you going out with a, a case of beer and sitting in standard i would have a whale of a time I'd probably have just as much fun doing that as I would going first and being treated like a king all day. Um, it would be it would be the same sort of experience. A Tesco's meal deal and a case of beer. Um, but the idea of being in, in the first bit and, and that, that sort of... I don't really like being waited on hand and foot. I find it quite intrusive. Um, I always feel like I really shouldn't be there. But on this tour, it was, I was made to feel very comfortable. Um, and I really enjoyed it. So yeah, let me know your thoughts, guys. I'll leave you with this, and you can go and try this scenario out for yourselves. Again, available over on alanthompsonsim.com. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Head over to alanthompsonsim.com for all your latest and greatest training sim needs. Join us on Twitch at the moment. We're doing Monday and Thursday nights. So if you're around this evening when this video goes out, if it goes out today, I hope it does, um, we will be live from 7 p.m. over on Twitch. Links in the description below. Once again, guys, thanks ever so much. I'll catch you next time.